very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. T, especially for completion in the, within the time. Good. Uh, now, examiners are requested to please proceed for Viva. So, Dr. Alvas, would you be starting first this time? Sir, you can start with me, sir. You can start with me, sir. So, Shale, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Atik, it was a good presentation. Uh, and uh, you have done a good work as far as uh, different analysis is concerned, implementation is concerned. And, uh, you know, overall analysis of the result is concerned. Uh, one thing uh, that kept me worried all the time during your whole presentation was using so many abbreviations, which normally are discussed, you know, whenever you are going to present your work. So you should not be putting so many abbreviations on the screen, right? Uh, just right, uh, putting the evaluators uh, into a difficult situation. Okay, so I think uh, better it is in future that whenever there is a presentation, you know, make those. Uh, you have made so many abbreviations which are not common abbreviations anyway. So you can put those names right. Uh, you if you say right uh, transmission power. So if you can write transmission power instead of TP. So I can say TP as a true positive. Normally, you know, which right. we have learned, right. you know, but uh, yeah, once right. you say TP, so I will be looking, you know, now, now this TP means, uh, you know, what uh, transmission power, sometimes, you know, it is positive, true positive, or true negative, and so on. So I would suggest that, you know, such uh, so many abbreviations, not few, it was, you know, hundreds of abbreviations which have been used during your presentation, but your thesis is uh, written well. And uh, I have gone through your thesis and uh, uh, overall, uh, as I said earlier, I am satisfied with your work. But, uh, you know, the number of uh, observations, about two pages, I have already, uh, I typed those uh, uh, observations and uh, I have uh, uh, taken their photographs and sent to Esam Anisab. I think Esam Anisab, you have received those observations? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I have received. Okay. Yes, so these are the corrections which are needed right at different places uh, in the thesis. Now right. coming over to uh, question answer session. So uh, if we if we go to slide number thirty three. Yes, sir. Sir. Uh, I was just uh, right, uh, trying to understand that uh, uh, you have a, a signal to noise ratio and then you are, uh, you know, just looking at the distance and then you are finding out, you know, where you are going to have a right uh, good SNR value. Uh, not many people, they look towards uh, SNR as well as PSNR. So what was the reason for not looking at PSNR? Because uh, you have uh, peaks in the signals and you you want to take care of uh, uh, you know those spikes as well. So what was the reason for not going into PC PSNR? Uh, actually, sir, uh, 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 what we had available in the data set was uh, we didn't had a, a actually signal to noise ratio as such available in the data set. What we had was link quality indicator, LQI, and uh, we had uh, uh, RSSI, received signal strength indicator, and we have a noise floor which was taken as a default. So uh, it was easy enough to conceive, uh, put those propositions into signal to noise ratio. Uh, frankly, I didn't consider uh, about any other alternative in, the, in this regard. Generally, signal to noise ratio is obviously an indicator of how signals and uh, noise uh, are basically connected in the form of a ratio. But uh, uh, if we talk about P signal to noise ratio, uh, that I think would be more of a concern in a genuine communication system design uh, then uh, what we are saying is a kind of uh, trying to predict something. So, uh, so uh, I, I, I frankly never really thought of that. That if basically, uh, right, what uh, what I think that the papers 
right? You studied probably, you looked at SNR, but uh, I am an electrical engineer and any person uh, who electrical engineering and you know, your this particular work which you have done, right? So right. whenever any person is looking, you know, transmission power, signal to noise ratio, distance, and then looking at what is the signal to noise ratio. So one will be uh, always worried that uh, what will be the PSNR because that is the important parameter which has to be taken care of. Anyway, uh, you can suggest in your future work that uh, PSNR should also be uh, you know, noted so that right. whenever transmission is going to take place in actual devices in a real time, then, P right. then PSNR is very, very important. So please uh, right. add it for the future work, okay? Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you. For that. So now, can we go on to slide number 37? Yes, sir. So here, right, uh, we have uh, the, you know, different parameters. And uh, you said, you know, you are going to uh, look at these, uh, uh, their impact of PDR, looking at packet debris ratio and so I just want to know that, you know, how packet delivery ratio is really going to be affected whenever you are going to see, right, uh, size of the packet. Now, important parameters are what is the packet size, then, you know, how much delay you can tolerate, and uh, then, right, uh, what is the value of PSR. So what are the best combination of these parameters so that uh, as a reader, if I look here that, you know, I want to have maximum PDR, but where should I compromise looking at the PS and dis distance? So please let me know that where you are going to make sure that, uh, you know, this should be the parameters as far as my PS, are, my PS and uh, right, uh, my distance is concerned so that I have a good packet delivery ratio. So what is your, your answer to that? Yeah, so uh, 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 it's, it's a very good question considering that this is what the system is expected to recommend to the devices so that they can fine tune uh, considering any quality of service metrics. However, if, we, if I talk about any concrete value that I don't have that concrete value right here because the purpose here was to devise a general learning framework that utilize to make these recommendations. Now, the next thing is making these recommendations. Making those recommendations is something that I have not covered as such. Now, uh, if we uh, if we talk about the general, general learning from this system, now different situations will demand different kind of packet delivery ratio. For example, uh, we consider two applications. Uh, one is throughput hungry, and the other is uh, reliability hungry, and it is not really throughput concern. Uh, it doesn't have that throughput concern. For that case, if we are considering, uh, for example, throughput, we might be interested in setting packet delivery, uh, packet size to a bigger value. Because if we set packet size to a smaller value, we will be sending a lot of control data. So the throughput will be affected. However, if we are concerned about reliability and we are not uh, that concerned about uh, uh, throughput, we will be interested in using smaller packet sizes. Because if we are uh, sending smaller chunks over the wireless medium, it has better chances of success. So we can talk about this thing in general, but not in very, uh, in, in very specific terms, because in different applications, in different domains, different values will so, uh, suit. What this, uh, this, uh, this kind of prediction system uh, should be capable of is, when it the system can learn that this particular of packet size can result with this kind of a packet delivery ratio, and obviously we are not considering packet delivery ratio only in relationship to packet size. It is a function of many different parameters. So not only packet size, what should be an appropriate value? For example, if my distance is 10 meters, the packet size recommended by the system should be different. And if my distance uh, from the uh, receiver is 35 meters, it should be different. If if uh, I have I am having a lot of queuing, the packet size recommended would would become small. And if I having very if I am having very less queuing, it can recommend a bigger packet size. So this is something when we say that we should have an intelligent framework that should learn and adapt without any other intervention, and it should not be hard coded. So this is what we expect from the system, sir. Okay. Now 
as you said, uh, my next question was that, you know, reliability and throughput, they are the very important parameters. And all these, uh, that data which you have shown over here, as far as packet delivery ratio is concerned, your distance is concerned, your overall, right, uh, other parameters are concerned. Uh, you know, as a researcher, if I have to take benefit of your these research results, so I should be very clear that if I implement uh, the model which has been proposed by Dr. Atik, so how should I be getting right uh, better throughput? Because at the end of the day, if you have got excellent parameters available to you, and uh, for example, I give you you know a simple example that we both are talking to each other. Whatever you know, laptops we are using, we don't know whatever you know networks are available on the way. They can be super, but if we, at the end of the day we are not able to see each other, we are not able to you know uh, listen to each other. Then all these networks and all these you know excellent devices they are of no use to me, no use to you, uh, no to anybody. But people similarly, people are interested that what would be the throughput. Right, if you have all these power ratios, you have all these packet delivery ratios, you have the EQs, you have all these things, but you know how you know we will be able to get the throughput. So in your whole presentation, this throughput parameter, right, uh, it's uh, you know analysis and these things. Uh, I think uh, that was one of the important area because whenever you will be giving uh, right uh, to the readers, to the researchers, then they will be looking at your your, your system, your algorithms, right, uh, your research uh, to be taken further. But if they remain confused, uh, they will be right uh, a little re reluctant. They will be looking at your graphs but they will not be able to right, really take uh, a good point to go further. So can you kindly elaborate that why you know this throughput and reliability has not been taken right uh, properly or you know in, in detail in your work? Uh, right, sir. It's it's a, it's a good catch. Actually, uh, we had the facility of calculating throughput from our data available. And actually, we did calculate throughput over a number of range of values. The problem that I had with throughput was uh, when I was considering all these things, for example, these four parameters, these and fifth was obviously throughput. So I could calculate that. I can still calculate that. Uh, uh, what I have done is I have not included that as a parameter, predicted parameter here. So that is kind of completely missing thing. Uh, why I have not done that? Because we had a lot of problem dealing with, I mean, we had two very difficult parameters. One was delay. To, to determine that what should be the suitable out of 300 packets, what should be the suitable value for delay? Should we, we be taking mean? Should we be taking median? Should we be taking mod? And even I tried all these things. I tried predicted on median, a mod, and, right? So uh, empirically for different ranges, uh, we had different results. Somehow we fine tuned all these things for, for the case of delay, but we deliberately did not include throughput. Throughput is something which is available in our data. And as you have uh, highlighted that it is a very important characteristic, especially considering it together with packet delivery ratio or the reliability factor. So throughput is something which is available, but uh, sorrowfully we have not included that in this thesis. These uh, hitches uh, which were uh, making it difficult for us to get some kind of smooth and presentable and defendable results. So we have deliberately kept ourselves away from throughput in this case. And uh, we hope that uh, we can cover that in, in, the, in the coming days. Uh, I think uh, that was an important area which has been missed out. Anyway, it, it, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, my next question is, uh, you know, these are those practical things which I am asking, you know, that, you know, so that, you know, this research which you have done, uh, you know, I am not uh, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, sort of giving comments, uh, you know, against your work. I am giving comments, you know, sure, you have done sure. good work. You have done good work, but this good work should be supplemented by those parameters which are accepted by the researchers in the world. Okay, then, you know, things sure, are picked sir. up very quickly and they take, you know, they quote your, your work and, you know, they move forward. Anyway, anyway, another important thing is that, you know, size of the queues. 
uh, if you have uh, you know packets coming and you know everybody would like to have uh, more size of the queue so that you know you have uh, continued communication and transmission going on but problem is that you need to have more space and your all the you know you know the devices which are physically available nowadays on the networks they cannot let you to have uh, bigger sizes of the queues now you have to compromise because uh, you know if you have more packets coming on and you want to have a pdr uh, in a good size to have a good communication so you have to compromise on to the queues and you have to reduce a bigger size of the queues to the acceptable size of the queues in your whole research what was the size of the queues which you have used in terms of retaining the number of packets in a particular queue uh, right sir actually there were two parameters related to queue one was maximum queue size and the other was uh, actual queue size so uh, the maximum queue size was the pre configured parameters uh, parameter and it had basically three different values. one was uh, one it was set to minimum this one it was set to 30 and then it was set to 60 right so these are kind of extreme so values. It, means one is maximum, it, it means maximum was 16 and the minimum was 30. minimum was one okay 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 so this was maximum queue size but in addition to that it was also observed against each transmission that what is the for example if the maximum queue size is set to 30 it could be that only two places are occupied or, or, or maybe 28 places are occupied so we also observed the actual queue size so actual queue size range range from 0 to 60. so uh, the, these are pre-configured parameters 130 and 60 and then there is an observation for each packet for the actual queue size which could range uh, from 0 to 60 then okay now suppose on average you have uh, you know queue size right of uh, 35 That's now it. if uh, th that is you know say we are sitting in an area where we are not going to get, have uh, you know a maximum packets coming on and we are not filling those you know the complete queues up to 60 but on average it is 35 and your network is intelligent enough uh, to set the right size of the queue right to for having a better speed uh, of 35 you know the packets to be retained by each queue now suddenly communication increases and uh, your um, you know messages which are coming they are more right than the sizes of the queues which have been defined by the system then there should be automatically recovery mechanism in your algorithm in your model that okay still you should be able to communicate Right. If uh, you know Q size is 35, packets are now coming on average 45. You will not be losing those packets, right? What mechanism have you used to right to cater for those extra packets so that they are not lost somewhere? So what is the mechanism that you have used? Right, sir. Uh, sir currently, this mechanism has not been considered at all in this uh, particular research. What uh, the, the the idea that I would like to just just uh, as you've mentioned this important consideration I would like to say is that when we talk about devices connected to any wireless sensor network or Internet of Things, uh, as an example, I can present two things. One is suppose uh, the pulse monitor, and the other is the camera monitoring the patient. Right now, the pulse monitor is something which will be sending periodic data, and the device that should be hosting it should have maybe a, a limit of one to two packets, right? That would be enough. Because even if it has 30 or more packets limit, then it will not help because sending uh, the, the, the pulse from uh, uh, say two minutes back is not useful. On the other hand, if we talk about camera, camera must be throughput hungry. So it will be painting a picture. So it will be sending a burst of packets at one time. So it now now the maximum queue size will come uh, uh, will basically be dependent on the device's capacity of the queue because it is pretty much a physical thing. So it will uh, 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 defined by the uh, firmware running on the system that how much of the memory is available and how much of that can be dedicated to facilitate the queue. Right now, out of that, whatever maximum is available. Uh, the usage will depend on how many packets are transmitted and what is the condition of the network. So I think the maximum queue size 
is uh, primarily more a function of the physical devices, its physical resources, and then out of that, whatever maximum is made available by uh, any device, how much is used, it depends on how much traffic is generated and how much the network is absorbing. Now, there is also this uh, very important concern that suppose uh, we have a very large queue. Uh, even in, if I talk about delay, we have we removed some outliers where a packet was queued for almost 10 minutes. Now, if we have a very big queue size and the network condition is already worse and we are trying to uh, 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 make sure that the packet is ultimately uh, on the air and it gets lost then and we have to uh, recover it from the queue again and it keeps waiting. So uh, another important consideration alongside this would be that how practical will it be? If we are facilitating a very big queue, it makes sure that the data will make through even if it takes a day, but it will make sure that it, it makes through uh, to the destination ultimately. But will it be of use? For example, in case of audio, we know that it will be a glitch. It will go past and even if you have something queued with us, it will not help. So um, the, the consideration that you have highlighted is also, I think, uh, combined with this factor as well. And if we need to investigate, I think both these factors needs investigation. But uh, if I talk about my particular system, I haven't paid any this any regard to this physical aspect of the system that if we have, suppose, this much of uh, memory available, how much of it will be dedicated. We are just saying that whatever is available, whatever is available, be the queue is this, uh, the device has these many transmission ranges. Uh, the number of trans allowed transmissions are limited by the MAC protocol to this. What can we make maximum out of that, whatever is Okay, this is okay, I think you have given a very long uh, reply answer right, to, to my question. What thing is, whatever you have said, if we implement that, then, you know, people in the world, the user, all users in the world, right, using so many millions and billions of devices or Internet of Things, uh, they will not be right uh, forced to buy right devices which can have appropriate size to have the better communication. They will keep on using the devices they have. Our system yes. should be our system should be able to facilitate them with their available uh, right devices to get uh, appropriate communication. Yes. Here, appropriate yes. answer is that there are you are using uh, wireless sensor networks in wireless sensor networks. They, whenever there is a right the queues are full, automatically alternative routes are found and you know communication is still sent from one end to another. There are so many paths available on the way. Those paths have to be taken care of in the algorithm. So, but you will not be right, looking for devices with high memory, with more capacity, not of that all, because that system is not going to work, work in, the, in, in the world. So that will be very, very dangerous algorithm if it is asking users to have the appropriate devices. Anyway, right. uh, what was the threshold, right? Uh, in your slide 54, you said, right, when it reaches the threshold. So what is the threshold, do you think, if you, you know, what, what, what type of value you were talking about threshold, slide 54? Right. right. Whenever you so were... The threshold... Uh, so yeah, I yeah. haven't find the threshold again here because uh, in this generic uh, consideration, we have only on only considered the effectivity or the possibility or uh, the practicality of the prediction accuracy. Uh, the primary contribution uh, is that uh, we have demonstrated that it is possible to predict. Now, again, defining a threshold will be dependent on any particular deployment for this system is put to use. Different systems uh, can define different threshold values. Uh, for example, if you talk about features, uh, like if, if you just let me show one of the results. For example, in this case, we see that we have seen that we achieved, achieved an accuracy of 0.026 for the packet delivery ratio with these three parameters. Right. So if we uh, we ask our algorithm to keep training until the prediction accuracy reaches 99, right, it can ultimately end up using all the parameters and telling that whatever maximum it has reached. And if we say that we need to reach, for example, 95 percent of, of the accuracy and at that time we are no more interested in training it further, it might end up with only three features and three features might be doing it. So uh, so. Uh, my, my dear, value that I can talk about here. 
my my dear student you know th this is very important because you don't want to waste time during your research you have got sufficient time to train your model to get the appropriate values uh, to make analysis but whenever you have uh, done your research then you need to put the appropriate values of threshold so that you have you, you are not going to waste time those threshold values are picked up for the you know best communication i think you need to mention right on so much analysis and experiment you have done you need to mention what what are the those thresholds which you achieved which is going to give you better performance so they should be mentioned so that other people they should not be wasting time in training their models and getting those thresholds did you get did right. you get my point yes yes okay so in your in your algorithm uh, it it looks right slightly slower uh, your algorithm 3 you know if you look at algorithm 3 so uh, they look slightly slower i don't know uh, you know what is the speed of uh, you go to algorithm algorithm number 3 i think algorithm number 3 is uh, on on page number probably 53 or 54 53 so if you look uh, you know uh, uh, if you go to next slide 53 so uh, you can see all these uh, 50, uh, on 52 as well right you pass one if then you know go to pass two if then now go to next 53 so now if you look over here right uh, the pass three goes on you have got a for loop then you go to pass four then again for then again. you go to the internal loop uh, right uh, again you know you are looking at the values so i was just want uh, you know looking at the you know in terms of uh, you know execution time uh, these algorithms uh, you know if you look at pass 4 so if it enters to for loop and then it goes into if uh, condition and then again it remains that particular area so it is not uh, you know that efficient uh, or in terms of complexity it is taking uh, n squared right or at the most n right times depending upon the value of data if data is 1000 yes. so then you can see 1000 times it is going to pass to pass four if it is n square 1000 into 1000 it means 1 into 10 is by 6 that is the iterations and that makes it, it slightly right uh, you know uh, slow so how can you improve this these algorithms to have because i have not seen right uh, you know the uh, time complexity once you know you have got you have got the data communication you are going to have good pdr but once you say uh, packet to delivery ratio is good and you may get 99 percentile but if you know time taken is more people not people not accept it right uh, they, if i talk to you and you get my voice after 2 uh, minutes it is of no use Uh, maybe you know my every talk, every you know bit of you know whatever i speak it reaches to you but it reaches to you late it is of no use so i think uh, that parameter you know you know uh, is uh, to be seen that what is the actual complexity of your algorithm so can you yeah. write uh, uh, you know can you elaborate uh, right th this algorithm number 3 as far as its execution right uh, complexity is concerned right sir Uh, so obviously it is a polynomial time algorithm and as you indicated that it will run yes, okay. in a kind of okay okay finish over here uh, polynomial is not uh, polynomial is a not good approach okay now let's move right. uh, forward if you please look into it and uh, you, you, we should be having uh, right uh, appropriate uh, uh, you know algorithm because polynomial approach right uh, in this particular scenario uh, it is good to, to get the data but for real implementation the system will become slow right it will be right, right uh, not uh, effective and people will not be right preferring to use your work my last question right. is uh, uh, percentage of training data so what was yes, the sir. percentage of training data and your what that is my last question right sir so the general you were going for prediction for prediction you said you are going to have uh, right training data you you know what was the percentage of training data as sir we generally trained on 50% of the data but then later we also carried out some hyperparameter analysis and we identified that even if we use 10% of the training data for most cases it does well for example last year in this case uh, for packet delivery ratio like we have just indicated that even when we used just 10% of the training data 
it uses a very good value for uh, prediction accuracy. But generally, it was uh, set to 50%. The good. general training uh, results that are very Okay, good. Here I wanted to appreciate you. Uh, this was a very good because having uh, you know a five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent training and getting the results which I have seen, I must appreciate that this is a very good analysis because you, you know people what people do uh, they go for fifty percent that then they go for fifty five percent they prime their model then they go for sixty percent and some of the results I have seen people have gone to seventy percent. You know, if you have got so much training, then, you know, in actual scenario, your system is going to fail. But I must appreciate that 10% uh, or 15%, uh, this is an excellent uh, piece of work which you have done. I must appreciate that. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Very much. Okay. Th that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Dr. Mas, please. सर आपका माइक अनम्यूट कर लें माइक प्लीज सर जी अतीक दिस इज अ गुड वर्क एंड गुड प्रेजेंटेशन काफी अच्छा आपने काम किया हुआ है और उसके ऊपर मैंने देखा कि आपकी पब्लिकेशंस भी काफी हैं तीन पब्लिकेशंस आपने की हुई हैं और चौथी आपने सबमिट कराई भी है एंड आई होप आई लीव इट टू डॉक्टर खलील के जितने एवेल्युएटर्स uh, के कमेंट्स हैं वो आपने इनकॉर्पोरेट किए होंगे और डॉक्टर यूनस ने जिस तरीके से इतना डिटेल एनालिसिस किया है मेरा कहना देर इज हार्डली एनी थिंग विच इज लेफ्ट लेकिन एनी वे और जी दिस इज ऑनर फॉर मी और ये मैं आप सबको ये बताऊं कि डॉक्टर यूनस इज माय एडवाइजर 15 इयर्स बैक पीएचडी एडवाइजर और मेरे लिए तो बड़ी ऑनर की बात है कि ही इज वन ऑफ द एक्सटर्नल एंड आई एम द अनदर एक्सटर्नल तो इनकी प्रेजेंस में आ, आ, मैंने इसलिए इनसे रिक्वेस्ट की कि ये पहले शुरू में वो कर लें क्योंकि आई नो के हाउ मच डिटेल ही गोज इन टू दिसिस और कितनी अच्छे तरीके से ये जो है वो एनालिसिस करते हैं चीज़ों का तो और आपने देखा अभी कितने डिटेल में इन्होंने जो है ना वो अतीक को क्वेश्चंस किए और बड़ी अच्छी इनकी जो सजेशन हैं दो शुड बी कंट्रीब्यूटेड इन दिसिस सिर्फ एक दो चीजें हैं जो अतीक मैं आई वुड लाइक टू एड जो डॉक्टर यूनस ने कहा ये सारे आपने जो क्वालिटी ऑफ सर्विस के पैरामीटर्स हैं इन सारों के अंदर जैसे डॉक्टर यूनस ने पूछा कि आपने इंडिविजुअली सारे रिजल्ट्स लिखे लिए हुए हैं देर हैज टू बी सम ट्रेड ऑफ और ये ट्रेड ऑफ इन सारे पैरामीटर्स को आप इकट्ठा करके यू हैव टू कम अप विद ट्रेड ऑफ के विच आर द वैल्यूज विच आर बेस्ट फॉर पैकेट डिलीवरी दिस इज आई थिंक आपको इसके ऊपर थोड़ा सा करके तो यू शुड कम अप इन योर थीसेस कि वो ट्रेड ऑफ वैल्यूज क्या है इसके ऊपर अगर आप कुछ कहना चाहेंगे सर यस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम ग्रेटफुल द कमेंट्स दैट आई रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम डॉक्टर यूनिस जावेद एज वेल एंड फ्रॉम यू एज वेल सर जैसे उन्होंने भी हाईलाइट किया एंड यू हैव आल्सो हाईलाइटेड दैट एंड आई फर्स्ट कंफेस दैट आई डिडंट रियली कंप्यूट एनी सच वैल्यूज बट कंसीडरिंग द इंपॉर्टेंस एंड एज यू हैव हाईलाइटेड आई विल अल्टीमेटली डू दिस फर्दर एनालिसिस टू आइडेंटिफाई दोस थ्रेशोल्ड्स दोस कट ऑफ्स दोस ट्रेड ऑफ वैल्यूज that if we do this what will uh, the sacrifice be and what will be impact what will be the impact on the other parameters so as of now i have i haven't got these values but i will definitely come up with these values ji ek to isko include kar lijiyega dusra mujhe ye bataiyega ki jab hum learning parameters ki taraf aate hain to ek bada acha dr yunus ne point out kiya ki aapka training data kitna tha and this training data has a direct relation with your results तो उसका भी एक ग्राफ जो है ना दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड के जैसे जैसे आप ट्रेनिंग डाटा बढ़ाते जाते हैं तो व्हाट इम्पैक्ट इट हैज ऑन द डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स ऑफ क्वालिटी ऑफ सर्विसेज इसको भी आप थोड़ा सा इंक्लूड कर लीजिएगा अपने थीसिस के अंदर दिस इज एन अदर इशू और जब आप न्यूरल नेटवर्क की बात करते हैं ट्रेनिंग के अंदर तो वॉट इम्पैक्ट द नंबर ऑफ लेयर हैज ऑन योर रिजल्ट Yes, uh, I, I've just shown that uh, analysis of hyperparameters towards the end. For example, the impact of fraction of training data, the impact of number of layers used to train the data, and even the number of neurons per layer against the number of epochs used. Okay, one thing more. Tell me, Rati, before uh, I give it back to uh, Dr. Zulfikar Habib, that he will discuss. 
देखें सिलसिले को मुझे सिर्फ ये बताइएगा कि आपने शुरू में कहा कि बहुत सारे बेंच मार्क डेटा सेट्स हैं आपने कौन से डेटा सेट यूज किए नंबर वन एंड नंबर टू इज दिस कि बहुत सारे लोग जो हैं वो मेटलैब के अंदर सिमुलेशन करके और मुख्तलिफ सीनेरियोज के तौर के ऊपर अपने रिजल्ट को जो है ना वो वेरीफाई करते हैं या उन रिजल्ट का आउटपुट देते हैं तो आपने कोई मतलब के अंदर सिमुलेशन करके जो डॉट माउंट कॉलेज में क्रॉडेट के नाम से सो ये जो डेटा सेट है ये पब्लिकली अवेलेबल है उसके ऊपर जर्मनी के कुछ रिसर्च ने रिसर्चर्स ने कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट किया था आई ट्रिपल ई ए टू टू डॉट फिफ्टीन डॉट फोर स्टैंडर्ड के अगेंस्ट जो नंबर ऑफ पैरामीटर्स इसके अंदर इंक्लूडेड हैं मैंने बहुत सारा सर्च किया बिकॉज आई हैड इंटरेस्ट इन दिस कि मुझे कुछ और भी डेटा सेट्स ऐसे मिले जिसके अंदर से मैं परफॉर्मेंस मेट्रिक्स को निकाल सकूँ बट आई कूडेंट फाइंड एनी मैचिंग और इवन कम्पीटिंग डेटा सेट विद दिस वायरलेस सेंसर नेटवर्क के जनरल डेटा सेट्स बहुत सारे अवेलेबल हैं लेकिन वो प्राइमरली सेंसर्स की रीडिंग पर बेस्ड होते हैं कम्युनिकेशन की परफॉर्मेंस के ऊपर नहीं uh and uh, the second question uh, that you uh, asked about simulations uh, sir main nahi chahta tha ki mujhe koi cheez simulations ki base pe karna pade because simulations ke bahut sare results hamare paas dastyab hain uh, lekin jo uh, i personally feel ke jo real environment ke andar se hum cheez le sakte hain aur uska analysis kar sakte hain particularly a wireless communication system it does not match any uh, simulation so mera interest tha कि मैं किसी रियल डेटा के ऊपर ही काम करूं बजाय इसके कि मैं सिमुलेट करूं सो आई डिडंट डू एनी सिमुलेशन टू अचीव एनी रिजल्ट्स इन दिस सीसीस अभी इस वजह से कह रहा हूं कि बहुत सारे सिनेरियोस ऐसे होते हैं जो कि आपके डेटा सेट्स के अंदर और जो रियल टाइम आपकी चीजें अवेलेबल होती हैं उसके अंदर आप नहीं ला सकते आप बहुत सारे सिनेरियोस को प्रेडिक्ट करके सिमुलेशन के अंदर करने के बाद यू गेट द रिजल्ट्स कि अगर ये वाला सिनेरियो हो तो मेरे रिजल्ट्स जो हैं वो इस तरीके से या तो इंप्रूव हो जाते हैं या रिजल्ट्स के ऊपर क्या इफेक्ट होता है राइट सर जी डॉक्टर जुल्फकार थैंक यू वेरी मच ओवर टू यू बहुत शुक्रिया आप दोनों एग्जामिनर्स का एक जो कॉमन पॉइंट है मैं उसको थोड़ा सा एक्सटेंड करना चाहूँगा रिगार्डिंग द मशीन लर्निंग मशीन लर्निंग ये डेटा माइनिंग और इमेज प्रोसेसिंग से होती हुई नेटवर्क में भी आ गई दिस इज वेरी गुड कि इसमें थोड़ा सा हम लोग भी जो बिल्कुल डिफरेंट एरिया के हैं थोड़ा सा आप इंटरफेयर कर सकते हैं इस हवाले से क्योंकि ट्रेनिंग और टेस्टिंग की बात हो रही थी तो इसमें मैं मिस्टर सीक से एक बात मालूम करना चाहूँगा कि उन्होंने कुछ डेटा सेट्स यूज़ किए हैं बेंच मार्क डेटा सेट्स यूज़ किए क्या कोई ऐसा एक्सपेरिमेंट भी किया है जिसमें ट्रेनिंग एक डेटा सेट पे की गई